Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize class. My name is Sue and today we're talking about monograms. Not just at plain old monograms, we're going to do split monograms which are really cool. And I'm going to take you step by step through it and we're going to learn how to make something cool. So to start off again we're in studio as always because that is where the fun happens. And we have a nice blank screen and we want to bring in our design. So we're going to go up here to the top to image and import. Now I have mine right conveniently on my desktop, but if yours isn't, you can navigate. It's probably in your download folder because you downloaded the video. But anyways, click on that, open. Um, I'm just going to say yes. Now this looks kind of big, but let's take a look. It's really hard to tell how big it is because you've got nothing to go on, right? So we're going to go back up to image and we're going to go to edit image window. So let's go into that and then you click on the second one. Four by four, that's about right for what I want. Remember one of the rules and we see it all the time with people having difficulties. You need to digitize at the size that you want your final design to be. So that's about right for us. So it came in at the right size. That's probably because I created it and I wanted it around that size. So that works out. So as long as you check, that's great. All right, so let's begin. We are gonna start, let's see, let's look at it. Hmm, let's see, the egg is behind and the ribbon is on top and the writing is on top of that. So that's where we're gonna start. So we're gonna start with the egg and now we want this in fill stitches because remember this is a, you know, almost five by five design and you're not gonna do it satin stitches or anything because that's way too long. But we're gonna fancy them up. Um, let's start here. We're going to place a point here, 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 there, and back up to here. Let's see, and I always do that. Re-click, click, and move. Now, this is called the clockwork method for doing curves. We don't have Bezier curves with this embroidery program, but I learned this from a guy named Von Glitzka. And I'm, you guys are in class for embroidery and I'm in class for learning vectors. And I find it takes a lot of time and guesswork. And what he does, 12, 3, 6, and 9. So we're going to work on this method. It does really apply to embroidery and it's great, but I just find it's a lot faster. So I just put points at the same parts of the clock. And then we're going to go back and we're going to adjust our curves and when you're doing a lot of big work I just find this a whole lot easier so there we go and I'm just pulling on the circles of course right here because you can see that makes a nice curve and let's see how that looks remember you can move up and down if you move it up it's gone off screen a little bit off our hoop but that's okay and you can move it up and down and back and forth to make it fit the curve that you want and I think that's pretty good, should be nice and round. Let's generate. Okay, that looks good, but maybe it's a little bit plain. What do you guys think, a little bit plain? Yeah, I'm thinking. So let's go to parameters and let's pick one of these groovy stitches. Um, it's for kind of like a fancy egg. I think the one I put in the first one is probably this one. So we can click apply and we can see, you can see now it has zigzags. That's kind of, let's generate it and let's look at it on 3D. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's nice for an Easter egg. It looks like it has built-in decorations. But why don't we make it just a little bit fancier? Let's go to parameters and let's go up here. So click down to effect, wave. Okay, nothing happens. You have to pull out the wave here. And I found pulling it right in the middle up to the top. Let's apply. And it puts a wave in it. Now, does not look better. Um, apply, generate. Does not look better. It looks like, you know, the egg is round. So that's a really quick way to add interest to your design. So let's go back into normal view. And we can turn off the egg for now so we can see what we're doing. For this one, we're not going to do the writing. And we're going to make a couple of changes because this is kind of like squared out a little bit. But for now, let's just work on it. 
So a point goes here and I picked um, just the fill stitch. Point goes here. As always, I'm just gonna run through everything quickly. You guys take your time and make it perfect. I'm just getting as close as I can get. That's probably good. Generate, and we're gonna make this. Why don't we do the same kind of purple because that looks really good, or a lighter purple. I'm not really sure. What are we gonna pick? Pink? Let's try pink, pink and red. Ooh wee. How about purple? Okay, that's fine, why not? Let's do the second one. So you go to fill stitches, and we're just gonna stick with the design for now, but we are going to change it. Just because the picture is a certain way doesn't mean you have to digitize it a certain way. We like to think outside the box and take a plain egg with a banner on it and make it better. So what can we do to make this better? Um, first, I'm going to get rid of the image. So up here to image, delete image, because we don't need it anymore. Panic, but there's our egg. So, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. Why don't we do the ribbon wrapping around? So let's move it in here. And this one we don't want too far back, just to the just to the edge, maybe a little bit more sticking out. Okay, that's good. Let's do the same thing with the bottom one. We're just sliding it in a little bit. And actually that one moved over instead of sliding because I didn't click on the right spot. So let's move that and then move it over and move this one over. And this can go back just a little bit. Try not to be too much of a perfectionist. Okay, I think that looks better, but then we have the problem right here. How do we fix that? Because it looks kind of weird. If you were wrapping a ribbon around, it would conform to the side, right? So activate it. Let's go up here to node mode, and we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Look at those gorgeous stitches. Awesome. And we're going to click and hold and drag this over right to the edge. And we're going to do the same thing with the circle part. That looks good. We're going to leave this side how it is because I think that looks neat. Now see how that conforms perfectly? Let's do that again. Click, node mode, move your nodes. Now this one I have to move both of the nodes. Careful not to move it down like that. We just want to move it over. And we want the curve to go basically with the egg. Let's see. And this one Let's see how that looks. Generate. Yeah, I didn't, didn't quite grab it, but that's okay. Let's zoom in maybe so we can see it better or so I can see it better. Yeah, see, because there's two. And I was trying to grab it, but I just didn't quite. Now we have to move that one back up. Looking good. Let's zoom back out. Now, to me, that looks a little bit better. That didn't take much to do. Move a couple nodes. Looks better. So now we're making a split monogram on this one today. So what's the easiest way to split a design? You go up here, these are your rulers. You go up here and we want it to the design to split this way. So we're going to left click and hold and we're going to drag down. See, it wasn't anything up here because we're not in the hoop. Drag down a guideline and we're going to place it right about there. And once you have it placed and it looks pretty good, again, you guys take your time and do it. I'm just going to do it quickly. You're going to right click on it. Oh, see, now I lost it. See, now that happens. Are we in 3D? No. Where did I go? Let's do it again then. Fine. While it's red, right click. Okay, you know what I'm doing? See, there's always a reason. You have to have it highlighted. Now it's available. So now we've sliced it, and we're just going to leave it with the stitches not generated. So remember, select this part, and there we go. And we're going to do down here. This is a little bit easier to see. And you see the dotted line is red. Right click. Was I not doing it? Yep, slice. So it doesn't look like anything happened, but if you look up here to the right, you can see now our eggy poos in three places. So we're going to remove this part. My hoop's a little small, but that's okay. And we're going to just delete it. We don't need it. We don't need it at all. Um, that was a really quick and easy way of perfectly splitting the design. Now I chose to split it up here because then we only have 
one layer here. If you split it down at the bottom, which most people would be inclined to do first thing, you're going to have a red layer. And remember, we're doing um, the pattern stitches, so it's a little bit thicker. And then you're going to have the purple. And that won't, you know, try not to do too many layers like that. Let's look at it in 3D, which looks like nothing because I have not generated the stitches. So let's go ahead and do that now. There's a keyboard shortcut, but I don't use shortcuts because it's just how I am. Generate, I just right click have here. See, now that's starting to look a little bit better. I'm liking it, but we can still make it a little fancier. Why don't we do something really cool here? Last week's class, we learned how to make our own motif stitches. And here would be a great place to do it. Now, I'm not talking about the egg because that already has fancy stitches and we don't want too many fancy things going on. But this has kind of a nice effect. I'm actually going to make this egg like a dark purple. Just a dark purple. Oh, that is just a terrible purple. How about darker than that? Yes, okay, that's what I'm looking for. So we've got dark purple, we've got light purple, we've got this ribbon that's now angled coming across, we've got some nice groovy stitches, and we have them nicely angled. Let's take it up a notch. So what can we do with this? You could outline it in a different color. That would look pretty. And to outline it, we're going to go to Convert, and we're going to do right up here, and I can see the shortcut, Control, Alt, and Zero, Create outline, it's an O actually. Create outline from fill, click on that. Now it doesn't look like it did anything, but here's your outline. It's just because we can't see it because it's the same color. So yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks a nice line at the bottom here. I still want to do more. So let's get rid of that. Sorry, Mr. Outline, you're out of here. Let's try something different. Now, what I want to do is I want this shape but I want it exactly the same and I want it exactly on top. So a lot of times you see when I copy and paste or whatever, I do duplicate. And when you do duplicate, let's do it, right? Because this is what I always do. It does it and look, it pulled it off. So then we have to sit there and fix it so it's exactly on because having it off is not going to work for what I want to do. So let's get, let's stop that, control Z, get rid of that. Click on this again, and we're going to right click, and we're going to, instead of using duplicate, we're going to use copy, and then right click again, and paste. And what it does is it pastes it exactly on top, and that is what we want for this. We want it exactly precisely on top. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click, and we're going to go to parameters, and we're going to change this top ribbon the second layer of the ribbon, we're going to change it to a motif stitch. Now, let's see which one. If you made your own motif stitches, um, this is when you could apply them quite easily. Let's try a couple and see so you can see what I'm talking about. So apply. Well, that's pretty good. Let's generate stitches. Um, but how about we change the color of it so I can see. See, doesn't that add a really nice effect to it really quickly? So let's try that again. I highlighted it, parameters. Let's try, that was motif eight. That one might be a little too fancy, but let's try. Hmm, I kind of like that one too. So what I did is I just went through and I tried a few different ones, making sure they fill up properly here. Now you could also have an outline because if you see here, this doesn't have the dark on it. You could also put an outline, but let's keep trying them and see. See, now I like that. That looks like a really nice ribbon. And when it fills it in, see it has this nice line here. That looks absolutely great. So that was motif 20. So apply, generate stitches. Let's go to this one. We're going to right click. We're going to copy. We're going to right click and we're going to paste. And it's pasted on top and you can check. This time, of course, we're going to change the color first up. And you can see that we have that one selected. We're going to right click. We're going to go to our parameters again, and we're going to go to motif. And we're going to go straight to motif 20 because we're making it look like it's the same ribbon and apply. Now let's uh, generate stitches. Let's step back. Now look at how pretty that is. Now that wasn't a whole lot to do. 
and I really like how it looks. We took a simple, quick and simple design. We split it, added some fanciness to our ribbon, um, and I think it looks great. It has some depth, it has beautiful colors, and when this stitches out, it'll be gorgeous. So the last thing we have to do here is add our lettering. So let's put, what are we gonna put? Oh, how about the usual? O, no, capital O, M, L, embroidery. Now I'd like something, and I'm just using Embird's fonts just because. What do we have? I don't have all the fonts by any means. Ooh, let's try this one. The OML is going to be a little weird. Ooh, I kind of think I'll like that one. So let's generate it and see. You could put, um, I do like it actually, it's a bit small, but let's uh, play around with it. You could put, you know, someone's name or a family name or anything you want inside it. Just as tradition, it's called a split monogram. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. Now, I broke my own rules here because whenever I do lettering, I right click and I group them. So I won't have problems like I just did trying to pull the O. What do you think? Oops, not too close. That's quite the fancy stitch, isn't it? I just want it pulled out to, I'm looking at this edge here and this edge here, so this could go back just a tiny bit. What do you think? We can't go bigger. We could go a little bit bigger this way, just to make sure the letters turn out. That might be too much. Well, how about we generate and find out? So you can play around with different fonts. Let's step back a little bit. See, I don't like that quite up so high, but I don't really want the Y to come down. Oh, I guess it's okay a little bit. A nice space in between, and it's pretty fancy. And there you go, you have a beautiful monogram. The only other thing I might do here is param right click parameters. Oops, that's not what I want. I want to go up here to convert, and I'm gonna do create outline from fill. And that puts an outline, and then I'm gonna right click parameters, and I'm gonna try the sketch stitch in the same color and see if it gives me the effect I want. And it does. I really like it. And it's going to show up here too, so it makes the ribbon stand out a little bit more. So I selected the object. I'm going to right click and, oh no, I keep doing the same thing. Select the object, convert, create outline from fill. Now I'm going to go right click parameters. There we go. And it's sample, apply, generate stitches. Just that little finishing touch for it. I might even actually make these color. What goes with purple? We don't really have a really good pink there, but let's try that. Just to make the name stand out. So it's kind of purpley pink and wow, doesn't that look good? Now, if you wanted to, you could play around with different colors or different colors would make the whole thing look different. Of course, shades of red, shades of pink. I just see another pink that I would have liked. You could make them all pale colors. You can play around with the font. Let's do that. Let's go to edit text and it's going to bring it up. And you know, I just, just to show you how different it can look, because that was kind of a fancy font. How about we go for this swirly kind of font and let's generate it. So then you can see it and remember generate thinking and remember to right click group. See now that has a complete different look to it. I'm not sure which one I like better. What do you guys think? I don't know. I think that's cool. I do like the color but see how that looks completely different now just by changing the font. So you can play around with different fonts. In the next one we're going to do two of these, two different ones. In the next one we're going to download a monogram font. We're going to use the same picture and do something completely different because think outside the box. You can come up with ideas just looking at your picture. So that's awesome. That is a split egg monogram with ribbons, with motif stitches, with fancy stitches, and it's all come together just beautifully and that would look great on anything. So of course, let's save our design. Do save as desktop and we're gonna call this one egg one and uh, if you wanted to send this to your machine of course you would take it out 
and set it up as a PES or a DST or whatever you use. Also, don't forget to optimize over here. We would have a lot of jump stitches. So before you finish doing anything, make sure your jump stitches are, you know, the least amount possible. I don't have everything in order. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to go over that. I did a whole video anyways on organizing and making your connections. And the idea of really good embroidery is that you have um, the least amount of jump stitches and trims possible. So I would probably stitch, um, just to move things in order, the light purple, and then I would stitch this and then go to here. And then obviously there's going to be one jump stitch to get to this part. And that's how I would do it just to make it a little bit better. So work on your optimization and um, let's check it on. We're on 3D. Let's do a quick simulator because I always do this before I send it to my sh machine. Yep, nice amount of stitches there. So you can't really see what it's doing. Again, it, look at that nice bend though. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. That's how to give your embroidery some depth really quickly. That was just a few clicks, no big deal. So anyways, I think this is gonna stitch out properly. We don't need to watch it stitch. But do optimize and do make your connections. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then go grab that video. I did a whole entire video on how to do it. And it's just something you need to do before you send any embroidery to your machine. So let's go up here to design. Let's go new. And we're going to bring in the image. So image import, it's the same image. Uh, click yes. Now you remember it's the same image. So I know it's, you know, four and a half by four and a half. And again, that's the perfect size for what I want to do with this one. So we're going to do this one a little bit differently. We're going to completely ignore these ribbons. So let's start with a fill stitch. And again, we're going to use the clockwork method. So we're going to go to 12. We're going to go to three. We're going to go to six. We're going to go to nine. And we're going to go back up here to 12. And we've made a nice diamond. But now we're going to go back and we're going to bend out our sides to make it all look good. So far, so good. Again, I'm just doing this quickly. You guys take your time, make the lines match because it's a really good egg shape. That's good enough. Generate your stitches. And let's go to 3D. Yeah, that's pretty much an egg, isn't it? Yep, it's just an egg. Pretty plain. How about we make it fancier? I am going to select the egg as an object. And I'm going to go over here to the left to hole cutting. And I'm going to put down one spot. I'm going to go up here to shape. And this is quite large, so I'm going to do ellipse, 16 elements. And I'm just going to pull it out. Probably about like that. Let go, right click, two elements. And then obviously I don't want it here, but I'm gonna show you a little trick because I never pull them out, right? I never pull them out right in embroidery or Illustrator or Photoshop, I just never do. So while it's highlighted like that, and you can see that it's red, you can move this baby around and you can place it where you want. Now let's look at the size, 187 by 191. It's a little bit off. I really want a perfect circle. So you can even resize everything. Why don't we make it at two? Because we want enough room to put our letters in, right? So let's make this one two. Now, perfect. Isn't that perfect? Size it up. And once you click off, so you lose the ability to move it. And now we've lost the ability to move it. However, it's perfect. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's get rid of our image because it's annoying. And here we are with our egg. Now I would, as I clicked off there, I see right here that could be smoothed out a little bit. So let's go back in. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we need to just bring this in just a tiny bit or bring out the circle parts. We can bring it down maybe because I just don't, I want it to look a bit smoother. That's be, me being picky. See, that's better. That's much better. So the first thing we want to do here is give it a little bit of an outline. So I'm going to click on here, select the object, and I'm going to go up here to convert. 
and create outline from fill. And then I'm going to go, while these two are highlighted, this is the, the outline that we just did, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to parameters and I'm going to make them satin stitches apply. And there we go, generate stitches to get rid of that. Let's go here in 3D. See, that looks pretty good. I still see a bump there. Uh, I would sit and play with it. So the other thing we can do, we can, again, make this egg fancy. And when you're selecting your object, you quickly look up here and make sure you have the right one because the bounding box would look the same no matter what you're clicking on, except for the inside one, it would change. But make sure you're on the right one. Right click, parameters, and let's play a little bit. What can we do? Let's not do the same egg one, but let's do kind of a fancy one. How about scales? And it's hard to see. Let's do generate stitches. And then we're going to go into 3D. See, that one's hard to see. Well, it's okay, but that's not the look I'm look looking for. It's not the droid I was looking for. So let's try something else. How about bigger scales? Yeah, that's really pretty. I like that. How about a wave? Try a wave. And this is how I decide. I, unless I have something, you know, dramatically in mind, exact in mind, I just play around. Ooh, I like that one too. That's very fancy. Three waves. Ooh, how about stars? But this is how I do it. You just play around until you get the look that you want. Circles would probably be very nice, wouldn't it? See, yeah, I kind of like that one too. This is going to be hard to decide. A grill. See, I like that. You know why? Because that looks like little birdies' feet to me. So I think that's awesome. Um, awesome. I like it. Generate. We're going to leave it at that. What we have to do, this is a cutout monogram. So it's an egg monogram. It's not a split monogram, but it's a monogram. And a lot of people say, well, they can't do monograms because they don't have, you know, a proper monogram alphabet. Well, I'm going to show you a quick way of getting one, but I'm also going to show you on how to work with it with just any lettering. Let's pick the most boring ember lettering, and I'm going to show you how to set up a monogram. It's actually quite easy. So I just clicked on alphabet, and we're just going to use the ember alphabet. Actually, first, I'm going to kill that. I need some workspace here, so I'm going to go just quickly and just make my hoop a little bit bigger so I have some place to play around with a little bit, brother. And I think we want it probably that way. There we go. Apply. All right. Now we can move our egg so he's not way in the corner. Let's put him in the middle of our screen. But now we have all this place to play around with. So let's go back here. Let's go here. And we're just going to pick, you know, this is boring. They're just simple. They work really well, though, but they're just simple. So let's pick the letters O. How about caps? O, M, L. Now, if you just put that inside the egg, that's not really a monogram. That's just three letters. Uh, it's just a line of type. Monogram um, does have a certain style. And the certain style they have is that the middle letter is the biggest. So let's just make our middle letter the biggest. And this is how I do it with any font. So I set up the M and I'm going to move out the O. Sorry, whoops. That's X there. I was just too enthusiastic in my selections. And let's move it out. So the O and the L have to be a bit smaller because they don't quite fit. So we're going to stretch the M. Careful when you're stretching letters. Um, they sometimes don't look the greatest when you do that. So you can make a monogram out of any font. And it really doesn't look as bad as you think. See, that's it. Small, big, small. Um, they're not in the right order, but you guys can, there's certain rules with monograms. However, feel free to break them. I always do, and I always get huge compliments on everything that I do. Let's um, right-click, generate stitches, and see how that looks. See, out of three plain letters, we have a monogram. Now, I would change the colors. And for this, what are we doing? Something bright, because we want the letters to stand out, right? See how that stands out? I might move the O over a little bit. Or you can, you know, you don't even have to move it. You could just thin it a little bit. That probably looks better. Right click, generate stitches. And maybe do the same with the L just a little bit. 
Not much, just a little bit. And a little bit more. That might do, generate stitches. Now look at that again. That is exactly how you do a monogram. And you can do that. I'm always a fan of working with what you've got and figuring out how to do anything with what you've got. Rather than keep buying stuff, work with what you've got. If you've got some groovy fonts, yay, use them. If you've got plain fonts, yay, use them. There's just a few techniques to making it look like a monogram, and I think that would be nice. And I think this would be super nice stitched out on just about anything. How about a bag, make an Easter bag? Um, I think that would be fantastic. Put one of your kids' names in there. Awesome. But what if you want a fancier font and you don't have it? There's a few. Um, we're going to look at um, true type fonts. Now, remember, you have to have Font Engine to be able to do this. If you're using true type fonts, you really have to be careful with them. Not all of the true type fonts, probably half, not all of them are set up to do well in embroidery. And you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, sometimes they're too dense. Sometimes they have bald spots. Sometimes they don't form the letters properly. So you have to be careful with it. Now, I'm going to show you one that I've tried a few times. Not extensively, but I've tried a few times. And it's free, and you can use it. DAFont.com And I just opened my browser, and I've gone to there. And it's called uh, Monogram KK. And search for it. And there's tons of fonts on here. And they tend to work out really well. So this one's pretty good. I have tried it and stitched it on a few things and it's pretty good. Again, with all these fonts, you do have to have Font Engine. I highly recommend Font Engine because you can have fun. However, you need to know what you're doing and you need to make sure everything is not too dense and it's going to stitch out right. So what you do for this is you click over here on Download and it's going to download. I will download it again so you can see right down at the bottom here. Now, a lot of people say, okay, so I've downloaded the font. I have a zip file. I don't know what to do next. Okay, well, you go up here, monogram. I just clicked on it. And right here, if it says OTF or TTF, either one you can use. So if you double click on it, it's going to bring up this screen. And you can see the different sizes and how beautiful this one is. And if you notice, too, it's, it's going to show you everything about that font. But if you notice, too, it's only capital letters. So if you want to do small letters on anything, if you're just not even just using it for a monogram, you can't with that font. You can't use it. Um, this one, I happen to know, has a commercial license. So you can do it. Of course, you just can't sell the font because it's free. But you can do designs with it on it, and you're fine. And all you have to do is click install. I already have it installed. So yeah, see the monogram's already in. Do you want to replace it? So no, I don't. You can go ahead and do it. And that is all there is to it, to installing new fonts to use with the font engine. That's it. So how do we do this? Okay, let's go up, to, up here, insert font engine text. And we're going to, oh, my computer has to scan. Oh, it was pretty quick. All right, it rescans. So OML. Now that looks plain. So we're going to click down here and we're going to go all the way down to M. M, I went too far. And I have tons. But there it is. That's the font we just installed. So downloading is step one, installing is step two. And look at that. Isn't that cool? Let's generate that so we can have a better look at it. Isn't that cool? Now, if you look really close at this, that's pretty good. It works out to be nice satin stitches. You can see how well they're formed. Even the thin parts are nice satin stitches, thick and thin. And that's a great font to use. So why don't we use that on our egg? Let's put the M there, first of all. Now these, if you ever do that, see what I just did there? And it's like, oh my gosh, what are these lines? Those are the connections right up here. Do you see them? 
when you do lettering and you pick it, you do nearest connection. And if you go ahead and you move, I moved the middle one, so I got a whop or double whammy there. Um, it's going to keep it connected because you haven't told it not to. How do you tell it not to? Well, just delete them. We don't want connections. We can make our connections later, but we're going to be moving stuff around a little bit. So let's make our M a little bit bigger. See how pretty that looks? I really like it. Let's take our O, and I think I want the O right maybe over a little bit. But play around with your letters. Play around and get the look that you want. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Not much, but just a little bit. And this would look good with any lettering. I'm just doing an OML because I like it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down a guideline here. So because I want my, and it's not bad. I didn't do it too badly. I want my O and my L to be equal. And I eyeballed that just dandy. I think I'm going to try this. I'm not sure how it's going to look, but I want the M to take up a little more space just to get a little bit more of that monogram look. Wow. Do I ever like that? How about we right click and we generate stitches? Now look how pretty that is. Now let's look way in there. And you know what? Our letters are formed nicely. And that is a very fancy monogram right there. Now let's go through the motions because you really have to double and triple check on your lettering here. Let's go to density. And not bad, not bad for a true type font. Um, like I said, they don't always work. X-ray, not bad. You know this is going to be a little more dense because we have two layers here. And of course, when you are using the fancy stitches, I call them, um, you can see the density difference with them. They have way more stitch points. So let me show you the difference. Let's go back to normal. And you saw that. Let's look again. Density map. And it's green, yellow, and red all in the egg, which are just fill stitches, right? So let's go right parameters. Let's take off our cute one and put on just, you know, the basic one, this one, apply. And you also keep an eye on stitch count too. Generate stitches. And let's go to the density map. See the difference? So you need to keep that in mind. Um, I did a blog the other day about knowing about embroidery, um, you know, as well as digitizing and this is one of the things that you have to know if there's fancy stitches it's a lot more dense than just a plain stitch and what does that mean the density you can't do those stitches too small you can do fill stitches kind of small you don't have to worry about it but let's have a look let's change it let's go to undo undo back to our fancy stitches go to our density that's quite a bit density what do you think would happen if we made this small? Right now our egg is at three by four, so four and a half. So that's a pretty good size. What's going to happen when we bring this whole thing down? Say you just want something one inch. What's going to happen? Let's right click. Let's generate stitches. Yeah, do you see how much red there is now? I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but that, that might just be a hockey puck. And of course, if we look at this in 3D... The design is not quite the same and if you look here in the lettering that I said oh look at how pretty it is it messed it all up just by making it smaller so again one of the major rules is you digitize at the size that you want you need to be very careful with true type fonts some of them do work of course and you need to be careful using these fancy fill stitches because why? Because <laughs> they are a little more dense than other stitches and you don't want to make a, a mess of what you're stitching out. We want to strive to have good stitch outs. Now, although this one looks a little bit dense, it's not that bad. It, it'll be fine for that. And the lettering again is beautiful. It's obviously going to be lettering is generally more dense um, than other stitching, but that's two designs we did off of one graphic and that is thinking outside the box and that is making beautiful designs, two beautiful designs off of one and learning about monograms. 
So hopefully you guys learned quite a bit out of this one and learned about the fancy stitches and learned what you can and can't do with true type fonts. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video, the next class, which of course is next week. Um, happy digitizing and make sure you show me your homework. Thanks everyone.